This is such a nice sight. All of these vlogs posted. None of them are scheduled yet, but I can schedule them all today. Hello there guys, this is Savant Mist, and welcome back to the vlog. The vlog is finally caught up. At least, it is on YouTube right now. It's not published yet, but everything is up. Everything up until yesterday is currently up, which is really good. Oh, that was quite a bit of work that needed to be done. It actually got really hot in this room because both of the desktops were rendering last night. Um, but now that that is over, it's nice to see that everything is up and working. Up and working, something like that. Um, right now, I'm currently trying to fix my little laptop. It's just installing OS X. However, every single time that I've tried this, it has just died. Um, it just decided to stop working halfway in between in the install, so I tried something a little bit different. And right now, it's it hasn't crashed yet, but it's also not currently working. So, let's see if this works. Um, I'm actually doing a dirty install right over my old installation, because I really don't want to reinstall everything that I had installed before. So I'm hoping that this will alleviate that. If that doesn't work, then I have a lot more work that I need to do with this computer, because in that case, I'm going to completely redo everything, which means I need to nuke Windows and OS X. Um, because when you're installing a Hackintosh, you want to install, or when you're dual booting a Hackintosh, you want to install Windows first. Um, that is if you're installing them to the same drive, because Windows gets really, really finicky when you don't install it to the first partition of the first drive. Um, I mean, there are ways to work around it. I was able to work around it. Right now I have OS X on the main partition and then Windows on the secondary partition. But, um, I can't boot into Windows through the very nice GUI that I have set up to boot up OS X, because, um, it's not set up to boot through UEFI, instead it's a legacy boot. Um... So, if I install Windows first and then install OS X, I should be able to redo everything to get it to boot properly. Uh, that'll also improve the boot times that I have with just starting up Windows because it'll be booting up with UEFI instead of in legacy mode. But, at the same time, that literally requires me to destroy everything and start fresh. So, it's a little, a little annoying. Um, but that all banks on whether or not this actually installs correctly. Um, if this does, then I'm not going to bother because it's really not a huge hassle. All I have to do is start up the computer in a slightly different mode than I, how I normally do it. And, I mean, the performance gains are really only in boot-up time. It's not actually something that's not negligible. It's completely negligible, but it's just convenient to have it set up the other way. So, will that work? I don't know. It's up to you, computer. I hope you work, because that would honestly make everything much easier if you just worked. But yes, it is late. It's almost 5 o'clock. Um, I slept in. I've slept in a lot over the last few days, because I was just so freaking exhausted. I tried to wake up earlier. Didn't work. <laughs> I woke up. At, I set an alarm at 12, woke up. Really didn't wake up that well was extraordinarily tired, laid back down, and suddenly it was four. Oops! Uh, <laughs> but other than that, right now I'm making coffee, I'm gonna go make breakfast in a little while, I might see Nick a little later on today! Uh, Nick... Yeah, I think he's at work right now, he sent me a message and I was like, oh, I just woke up. He's like, yeah, I get out of work in a couple of hours, so... Let's see if I go see him later. But for now, I have to see if this thing will work, and I have to schedule all these videos. Fun times. <sighs> Same error message that I've been getting time and time again. I was hoping that this time this wouldn't happen, but nope. It would appear that I am getting this error message over and over. So that means it's time to uh, do the other thing that I was going to do and get everything else ready because... I'm going to need to install Windows, and or I'm going to need to reinstall Windows, and I'm going to reinstall OS X, so it's going to be a multi-step procedure. It's probably going to take a long time. <laughs> uh, yeah, since this is going to take such a long time. It's a good thing this really doesn't require too much of my attention until a later point in which I will uh, need to like download all of the programs that I had on both of these computers, because it's dead! Fortunately, I have everything that I really care about backed up on my Mac, and pretty much that boils down to just a single folder, if I could find it. Uh, oh, there it is. So, 
Open Emulator is like the only thing that I super care about, and it contains all of my everything. Uh, let's see, does this have all my... Yeah, I think this has everything on it. Um, like I said, Open Emulator is the only thing that I really care about from the OS X half, and on the Windows half there's nothing that's... I shouldn't say there's nothing that's important, but there is nothing that I don't already have somewhere else. So, it should be doable. Um, the one last... Mm, I could just try wiping out OS X and just reinstalling that instead, but... No, I'm gonna wipe and reinstall everything. It's gonna be a little annoying, but nonetheless, it must be done. So, this is the OS X installer. The Windows installer is currently plugged in, and it is being made right now. So, I'll be back when some exciting stuff starts to happen. And so the reinstallation has begun. <sighs> I was really hoping that I didn't have to do both, but I have to do both. I guess I have to wait for a while because this doesn't seem like it's going to be going anywhere super fast, but um, the goal is to install Windows, then immediately install OS X without like, installing anything on Windows just in case there's an issue with installing both of them. And after that, hopefully everything will work as is and I can just download all of my programs on both sides and be good to go. That's like 200 gigabytes worth of stuff that needs to be reinstalled. Good thing there is, like, no data bandwidth limits here at RIT and the internet's fast, so we'll be able to download everything relatively quickly. Yay! And it's time to reinstall all of the important software on this laptop, or at least a lot of it. Uh, let's see. I have Ninite going on in the background, just installing a bunch of the common utilities that I use, and then I have IntelliJ and PyCharm both being set up. Unity, Atom's done, I think Sublime is probably almost done. I use so many different text editors depending on whatever the heck I'm using. Uh, I think Sublime is done? No? Where the heck is Sublime? Uh, editor is not responding, just close. I have no clue where Sublime is, I could have sworn that I downloaded Sublime and set it up, or at least started to get it set up. But, um, yeah, just installing, like, a bajillion different text editors and coding, or developing IDEs, because that's usually what I use this laptop for. That and games. Small games, like retro gaming and some really late Steam gaming, and occasionally Minecraft. That is 97% of what this laptop does. Uh, but you might be wondering, why do I use, like, Sublime, Atom, and Notepad++? Well, Sublime is usually my go-to just because it, I'm used to it. Sometimes Notepad++ just has better, like, um, I don't know what it's called. Huh, I actually have no clue what it's called, but when the, when you're, like, developing, when you're writing code, how it will color the individual tokens of each line of code that you're writing, Notepad++ seems to be the best at doing that, but the UI isn't that good, so I don't like using it. And then I really want to switch over to Atom, because Atom seems like the best of both worlds. However, Atom has a couple of, like, minor quirks where, um... It just doesn't do what I expect it to do when it comes to, like, auto-completion of certain things. So, I still use Sublime because I'm super used to it, and because it looks pretty good. Atom looks amazing. I love how Atom looks, but it's just not as usable to me. But... Programs are finishing their installs, which is good. Oh, okay, everything is pretty much finishing right now. Uh, Unity is taking a little while. How is Microsoft Office going? Kind of slow. Oh, oh, never mind. I take that back. It's all done. There we go. And now that I've been doing all of this, how much space have I eaten off of the drive? Not, not a huge amount, but I have been sucking the space out of this like there is no tomorrow. So now the only problem is I have to install the OS X still. This is the partition for it. I just booted up into the OS X installer, and it didn't see any of the, uh, it didn't see the free space that I have allocated for it. So, I created the partition manually in Windows, and now I'm going to attempt to do that in, or I'm going to attempt to install it onto that partition now. I just have to wait for all this stuff to finish installing. Oh yeah, I also need to get Git and Git desktop and all of that stuff. A few more things, and then I'll be ready to boot into OS X and, or rather, install OS X and get the rest of this laptop back to how it is supposed to be. <sighs> if only this laptop didn't die after I updated it. So much extra work. This is all going pretty quickly, which is nice because <laughs> I didn't want it to take too long just because it was something rather tedious. But um, while that is finishing up the updates, 
I got a couple of anti-static bags when I got those two graphics cards for uh, the two 450s, and it turns out that they're super convenient because I can just throw my two old graphics cards into them, and now they are much safer because when they're outside of the anti-static bag, it's just... it feels unsafe to just carry them around, or just to have them lying around just because if they fall, it's not so much fall damage that you're worried about, but if they, like, fall into a carpet, static could generate, and that'll kill the card. And nobody wants a dead graphics card. So, now that they have their own little anti-static bags, this works out super well. Because now they can be, not really tossed around, but put somewhere, and I won't feel super worried that they're going to break. Like, I can just leave them right there. But, this has taken a while. Well, I just said it wasn't taking that long. Honestly, it's not taking that long, but anything that doesn't happen inst instantaneously is taking way too long. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna wait for this to finish, and then I will... Oh, wait, it's done! But I was gonna say I will see you guys in a little bit, but nope, it's done. Let's see if I can boot into the uh, OS X thing and actually have it work this time. Come on, I have to do a couple of extra steps because this is... It's set up a little bit weirdly. I basically just took my uh, UEFI or my EFI folder from my old backup and then decided to move it over to here, but it takes a couple of changes in order to be usable, but now it's bootable. Now I just have to wait for a little while because it takes... I don't know, it takes a couple minutes to start up because the flash drive, while it's my fla fastest flash drive, still isn't the fastest thing in the whole wide world. So, I'll be back to see if this thing works after it boots up. Okay, we're booted up into the installer. Now all I have to do is hope that it gets detected properly, that being the hard drive, and it does. Yes, the volume is formatted as XFAT, that is correct. And now I just need to erase this. Uh, hopefully this doesn't break everything? Let's see. Macintosh. SSD. Oh, <sighs> keyboard doesn't work. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, I think I have a spare keyboard. Actually, I don't think I know I have a spare keyboard. Let's see. <laughs> Gotta grab this, unravel this, and oh, geez, this is so unruly. And then I think I can just yoink this port over here, because... Wait a second. I shouldn't need to plug this in like this. I should be able to just use this guy right here. There we go. I have this mouse, this mouse plugged in with the cable because I think it was charging, but now I should be able to type... Um, uh, yep. Macintosh SSD Erase don't... Eh? Whoa. Come on. A mounting... T uh, what? Huh? Strange? Hmm. What the heck? This is an interesting setup. Okay, this is the... Uh-oh. No, that's NTF. Okay, let me let me close out of this because I think it's a little messed up. Let's start it back up. Select this and partition it. Uh, I need to choose the. Why is there an XFAT and an OS X volume? This is confusing, huh? And these aren't lined up properly either. Hmm. Let me fiddle around with this for a little bit to see if there's something messed up. Computer, there is nothing worse than telling me something like this. <sighs> when my computer tells me that I have been denied permission to do something, that's not okay. Um, I figured out what the problem is. Fixing it is going to be a gigantic pain, though. Um, basically... OS X requires that you have an EFI partition in order to boot, and that's because OS X boots using EFI. Now, when OS X tries to create an EFI partition, it will create a 200 megabyte partition and use it. If that partition already exists, it will use it. However, uh, since, well, first of all, since both, since EFI is kind of a standard set by a bunch of different, um, well, set by Intel, um, 
both Windows and OS X can use the same EFI partition. However, Windows makes a 100 megabyte EFI partition, while OS X requires there to be at least a 200 megabyte partition. So, what I need to do is take this 450 megabyte partition and shrink it by 100 megs and give 100 megs to that EFI partition. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it within Windows because Windows is denying me the privilege of doing that. So what I'm going to do is download or open up Lily or the live Linux USB creator and I'm going to attempt to get Gparted up and running. Actually, I would say that I would just use a flash drive with Linux installed, but I don't think that I actually have a flash drive that has Linux installed. So that means that I need to find, let's see, is the distro of Linux that I want on here? Doesn't look like it. Oh, wait, 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 there it is, Gparted. And now that I have that, I just need to find a flash drive that's not currently in use. Let's see, this is a one gigabyte flash drive that should have my DOS boot files on it, so I don't want to use that. Uh, if we go into here, do we have a flash drive that we can use? Doesn't appear like we do. Okay. Um, hmm. Crap. I might not have a spare flash drive. Wait. I don't want to use the Windows bootable flash drive because I might need to reinstall Windows again. Oh, uh, hmm. I don't see any other flash drives. I guess I could. I, I can't use this one because this one is dead. Um, do I seriously not have any more flash drives lying around? Wow. That, oh, here it is. There it is. The last flash drive. <laughs> Plug this in. Hopefully this 200 megabyte flash drive will be large enough. Uh, download automatically and choose a USB key. Oh, geez, this this program is slow. Okay, I'll be back after I get this thing imaged onto a flash drive. Okay, so everything is booted up into Gparted. So now I need to shrink this partition down and then move and expand this partition. Uh, I made a backup of all of the installers just so I don't need to download them again in case I completely break the boot. Uh, but I'm gonna hope that this thing doesn't horrifically break. Uh, so what we're gonna do is set this down to 300 and fit. What? Why can't I type? Oh, oh god. Okay. Oh god, it's beeping at me. 350. Free space following, resize and move. And then we're gonna take this one, and this is gonna need to be moved to the left. And actually, oh crap. Okay, first of all, okay, now let's cancel that. Let's take this and resize. Can I just drag it over? There we go. Resize and move. Uh, well, let's hope it doesn't break. And then what we can do is resize this once again and move and apply. So there's a very good chance that, oh, hmm. Well, one of those worked perfectly fine. The second one... What? It's 200 megs. Well. Something... Why, why is this complaining? Can I see what this is? Information? Uh... Hmm. Is there still... This is strange. I don't know why it's complaining, or why it complained. Wait, what? What? Ah. Okay, let, let me mess around with this for a little bit, and then I will see if anything happens. Then I'll reboot and see if the computer still lives. Well, the petition appears to be 200 megabytes, even though it's complaining that it's only... Well, that it's not 200 megabytes, so... I'm going to see what happens if I just attempt to reboot regardless, and... See if Windows still boots. Uh, I was able to use this flash drive right here, which is a really old flash drive that I have that's only like 200 megs large. So, yeah, let's see. Do do I boot? Does the computer boot? 
Uh, yes, it is still booting. Okay, so that's good. Now the question is, is the EFI partition 200 megabytes like it's supp- Oh, no, skip, skip. You know what, Sk skip that, and will it still boot regardless? Okay, it's still booting. It's probably really confused as to why, like, uh, partition sizes have changed in a couple of partitions where partition sizes should not change. And now what I need to do is Windows R, uh, disk part, and then we can do list disk, and, what the heck, oh, okay, select disk zero, list volume, and, let's see, recovery is 350 megs, while the EFI partition is 200 megs, that's, Good. That's really good, actually. Okay, so now that we have that, this flash drive can come out. I should actually just leave this as a uh, Gparted flash drive because this is the perfect amount of size. The flash drive is 256 megs and Gparted was like 218 megs, so it just barely fits. Uh, but now I can take the OSX installer. I also plug this flash drive into the uh, thing to see if I can get Gparted to recognize it, but nope, this flash drive is officially actually 100% dead. It's not even detected anymore, so let's plug this guy in. And now that we have that, I should be able to restart this one more time into the OSX installer and then attempt to install OSX. I hope. Maybe. <laughs> oh jeez, go, 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 go. Uh, yeah, I hope this works. Okay. Moment of truth. Did all of that work? I was able to boot into Windows with no issue, but can I do this? Yes! It works! Oh my god, I'm so happy that that worked out. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually really surprised that that worked out, because I was honestly not expecting that to work. But, the installation can begin. My laptop will once again have both operating systems. Now the only thing I need to do is, at some point or another, get a larger SSD and install Linux on here too, because I could probably, I could really use Linux, um, especially when I'm grading homework. Most, a lot of the people, well, everyone submits homework from different OS's, but the way that I always think of it is it should run in Linux because that's what all the professors usually have their automated grading go through. It's running on some sort of Unix OS. So, I mean, OS X is a nice alternative to that because OS X is Unix based, but from time to time it would probably be really useful to have, um, just a standalone Linux box as opposed to a virtual machine to do grading in. But does this work? Oh my god, this is working. That's actually quite surprising. I can connect to the internet for no apparent reason. Okay, gotta wait for this to finish. Nick's here. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's here. Uh, I've been trying to get him. For, uh, like, I've been calling him and sending oh, him messages oh. and <laughs> no response. And then I hear, hey, Andrew, let me in. And I'm like, oh, what? My phone's, but, um, my phone's in the kitchen. I, you know, he didn't bring his phone. But now he's here. And this is almost done. And it's working. A minute left. Did you put Mac on that as well? Yeah. <laughs> Max on everything. I got OS X on the main desktop. It was running on the secondary desktop, and now it's just running Windows because I, I'll, I'll tell you, you about that in a little bit. The internet knows about that. And, yeah, I think the only computer that doesn't run OS X is the big laptop because of some weird hardware software choices. All the hardware is compatible, but there are some odd restrictions on it to make it impossible. But, um, oh, it has finished. What is this running OS X? I mean, no. <laughs> I would if I could. If it could, I would make it run OS X. But uh, let's see. Does does it work? Can I boot into OS X? That is the last question. And that will also be the last question for the vlog, because as soon as we attempt to boot this, it's when I end off the vlog for the day. Is that? It's Clover. It's the best bootloader. So the question is, does it work? Oh, man. Is it going to boot? Do we have both operating systems back? Oh, it's going so far. It hasn't kernel panicked no, it yet. Gets that slow, though. Come on, come on. Fingers crossed. And. It, well, okay. okay. Come on. A little bit faster. I haven't really seen it hang there before. First boot takes so long. I mean, there's hard drive activity, but. Oh! oh it's here! Oh, it's oh, here! Oh, oh, oh. The glitchiness is normal. It's almost there. Come on. 
Come on. Almost. Almost. Gay. It happens on Mac as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, not, not very often, but I've seen it a few times. Now this guy works, and both the Windows and OS X half are happy. And on that note, I'm gonna end things off. So, guys, I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. Say, say bye, bye to Nick. Guys. He just got here, but it's like morning. I know it, it's midnight. <laughs> oh wait, no, it's not. It's only ten. Wow, I'm I'm a little messed up. See you guys tomorrow.